Okay, here we go, everybody. And you know who I am. I'm Tom Kolb, an extension horticulturist for North Dakota State University. And I, I'm a failure as a moderator. We're going late a little because you get so many great questions we're having tonight. But I'm going to do my best to get us out on a good time. And we are going to talk about some top vegetable varieties for North Dakota. So do you want to have a great garden this year? If you want to have a great garden, you got to have great seeds. And let's talk about some of the best varieties for North Dakota and where to get them. Some people say the first sign of spring is a robin. I say no. The first sign of spring to me is going out to the mailbox and getting all those seed catalogs. Yeah. When I was a kid, I did not read comic books. I read seed catalogs because they are full of adventures. You can dream about growing a yellow watermelon or how about a red sunflower. Seed catalogs are full of adventure. And in one of your handouts, you have a, a front and back publication about vegetable cultivars for North Dakota. On the second, on the back page there, we have a list of seed sources. These are seed companies that will mail you a free seed catalog, free adventure books that you can order. And I'm gonna just briefly talk about some that I really insist that you order. Start with Johnny Selected Seeds. If I could have one seed catalog, I would get the one from Johnny Seeds out in Maine. Johnny's has an aggressive and successful breeding program but besides their quality seeds, I also like the information they provide. They want you to succeed. And I always keep the Johnny's catalog with me to give me information about when to sow the seed, how to sow the seed, what bugs are gonna be a problem, what diseases are gonna be a problem, and how to harvest the, the crop. This is a great resource for everybody, even if you don't buy any of their seeds. Another good seed catalog I highly recommend is the one from Randolph, Wisconsin, the Jung Seed and Plant Catalog. And what we found in our trials is the varieties that are offered by Jung do well here in North Dakota. If you're looking for a lot of seeds, bulk seeds, you may not know about this company, but you should get to know them. Jordan Seeds out in the Twin Cities area. Um, they offer great quality varieties at hard to beat prices, just great prices. On the other hand, if you just need a few seeds, gardeners have given me this tip about Pine Tree Seed Company. Pine Tree offers a lot of seeds that in smaller packets, only, and they cost only about $1.95 a packet. And you can see they even have free shipping a lot of times. And that really helps because some seed catalogs just to buy a packet can cost four to five dollars and then they hit you with the shipping cost. Pine tree is very affordable and they have great quality varieties. If you're into heirlooms, and I am not, I'm not especially into heirlooms because I believe there's a reason why heirlooms are heirlooms. Like I didn't drive to Fargo today in a horse and buggy. We made progress. And same with seed breeding, we've made progress. Um, heirlooms are, generally speaking, less productive, less reliable, more susceptible to diseases. They require more management skills. But nevertheless, there are some great flavors in some heirloom varieties and great stories. And I like the Seed Savers Exchange. I admire that company. It's a group of thousands of gardeners who save seeds for that save seeds since for centuries. Um, you can get old seeds. Like for me, I'm Irish. I can I can go on the Seed Savers Exchange as a member, and I can get the same potatoes that my Irish ancestors almost died because it was such a failure of a variety. But I can experience the same suffering as they did and see those potato vines wilt. It's a fun situation. And here's another thing. Here's a good story for North Dakota. Through the Seed Savers Exchange, I can get the Arikara Yellow Dry Bean, the same bean that's been grown for centuries by the Arikara tribe of North Dakota, the same bean that they shared with Lewis and Clark, the same bean that Lewis and Clark shared with Thomas Jefferson. So I can have the same flavors that have been enjoyed in North Dakota, again, for centuries and the White House too. So there's some great stories with heirloom vegetables. 
But now what's the problem with seed catalogs is that they're trying to sell you something and they're not going to say, oh, this variety ain't, no way is it going to ripen in North Dakota. Or they're not going to say, well, this is a good variety, uh, it tastes good, but I'm sorry, it's really susceptible to powdery mildew. You've got to find that information yourself. And that's one re reason why we started the North Dakota Home Garden Variety Trials. We've got a network of over 200 families that we work with every year to test promising varieties in their own backyard. And everybody is welcome to participate. We hope to have our announcements out in about a week. And uh, we encourage everybody to join our network. We have very simple trials and very powerful information to find out what works here in North Dakota. The way the trials go are simple. Like let's say we have an early Nantes carrot, which is a garden carrot trial. We'll give you two varieties to test side by side. So you get two seed packets, enough to sow about a 10 foot row. We'll give you two labels so you remember which one's which. We'll give you the official 10 foot string. So you have a, this is really hardcore science we got going on. And then a simple sheet. We want to know which one germinated better, which one was healthier, which one was ready to harvest first, which one had a higher yield, and then we want to know which one tasted better. And we get this information. We also need to know which of these varieties do you recommend. And from that information, we get the research results. We have like about a 140-page report we write every year from your results. We do over one thousands of these trials across the state and and from that comes your list of vegetable cultivars for north dakota that handout you have so those are my recommendations those are recommendations from over a thousand families in north dakota and surrounding states these are the varieties that perform well in their backyards and that's what it's all about right how do you find the best varieties for a gardener you test them in a garden and so this is a very powerful tool that said, these are the traits that generally we recommend for a superior variety. We want stuff that ripens quickly in 100 days or less, or it may not make it here in North Dakota. We want varieties that are flavorful, that resist diseases, so we don't want to spray with fungicides. We want varieties that are productive and varieties that are adapted to North Dakota. I'm going to go over quickly some of the best performing varieties and most popular varieties in North Dakota. And we'll start with the one that everybody's most interested in, and that is tomatoes. We talked a little bit about this tonight, about with tomatoes, there's different types of vines. There are determinate and indeterminate types. The determinate types are compact and bushy. You don't have to prune them, and you don't even have to trellis them if you don't want to. Their yields are generally early and concentrated, and that's good. I like determinate vine types. They're very easy to grow. Indeterminate types are tall and climbing. They, they must, you must prune them and you must trellis them. Indeterminate types often will have a larger and more flavorful fruit. I think it's, it's more flavor because there's always new leaves being produced, always healthy leaves producing lots of sugars for the plant. Indeterminate types have an extended harvest. And hey, if I lived in Florida, I would grow indeterminate types. And I would appreciate that extended harvest, but I don't know if we really need that here in North Dakota because our growing season is so short. So I don't mind an early concentrated yield because at least I'm going to get a yield that way. But just know there's different, different workloads with these two different vine types. Here's some of the most popular varieties in our state. The early girl on the top there is an early one, if, and it's indeterminate type. If you want a determinate type, and it has that D in parentheses, there's bush types of early girl that can grow on a patio. Celebrity, I think, is the most reliable variety that we can grow here in North Dakota. Big beef is a beefsteak type that's early and flavorful, and it can tolerate um, a wide range of growing conditions. A lot of people don't know about Mountain Fresh Plus. It's, I don't see it in a lot of greenhouses here in North Dakota, but it's the number one tomato of the Midwest and the East in the United States. And it can tolerate cool conditions. It does well in North Dakota and it's a quality fruit. For cherry, Super Sweet 100 is a very productive variety. And then for canning, 
like you heard Harleen early talk about how she lives for Roma tomatoes. That's so easy to grow, has a very short vine. But some people like San Marzano for, for its special flavor, but that's an indeterminate type and a little bit more difficult to grow. I, I saw in the chat box, somebody says, you've got to try Juliet. And I agree with you. Uh, Juliet is, uh, it won the All America Selections Award, the AAS winner, because it was something new and does well over a wide range of environments. Juliet is like a cross, it's like half cherry, half Roma type. So it's a really meaty type and it doesn't crack easily. Juliet's a winner. Another type I would encourage you to try are some of these orange cherry tomatoes. They have a very fruity and a very sugary taste. Sun gold and sun sugar are outstanding varieties for North Dakota. Let's talk about beans. Now I'm going to go beans to squash in alphabetical order. Rapid fire go. We start with beans. It's one of the most popular vegetables, and a lot of people like the green bush beans. And Bush Blue Lake 274 is the number one variety across America for snap bush beans. In North Dakota, it does well. But one thing I want, when we compare it to another variety, it doesn't really blow anything out of the water. It's always like a 55% will be this variety and 45 the other. Like we've compared it against Inspiration, last year Greenfield. And pretty much gardeners are just as excited about other varieties as they are Bush Blue Lake 274. So it's good, but it doesn't overwhelm you. Something that will overwhelm you are filet green beans. I give out thousands of seed packets every spring, and I can count in every July and August, I'm going to get people calling me saying, what was that variety of bean that you gave me? I never saw such a great bean. And these are filet beans, and Crockett is a winner. It's dark green slender, crisp, tremendous yield. Serengeti, Serengeti is another winner for filet beans. I encourage you to try them. People in our trials who try them, love them. Carrots, this is a Nantes type, which is a common garden carrot. Goldfinger is a winner for North Dakota. It, it does very well in our trials. If you have a hard soil, you probably need more of a, a stronger root, and that'd be on the right side, the Chantenay types. Hercules is a strong root. It'll penetrate through the rockiest of soils. New Caroda has amazing flavor, rich flavor, and good for juicing, too. You know, we talked about some of these special nutritious uh, vegetables and like purple carrots. You know, I think that's what, I'm glad we do tests for flavor because purple carrots kind of look pretty, um, but a lot of them are bitter. So even though I, they're more nutritious, what good is it if you don't want to eat it? So I generally recommend the orange carrots, the red and the purple ones. They're just a little bit bitter. Sweet corn. Wow, what a revolution we've had for sweet corn in the last 30 years. When I was a kid in Minnesota, we, I, every night I would pick a hundred dozen of sweet corn and take it down to the Minneapolis farmer's market. And this was just a normal sugary sweet corn. I knew when I went down to the market, I had a sellout because the next day that corn would taste terrible. It'd be good for the cows only. But now we got super sweet varieties that are three times sweeter and hold on to the sugars uh, longer for days even. The one thing about super sweets, though, is they have a shrunken seed kernel, so they don't germinate very easily. Um, and so when I look for a super sweet variety, I look for something in the catalog that says it germinates good in cold soil, and I'll wait till mid-May to sow. A variety we tried last year was American Dream. It was a strong performer in North Dakota. Burpless cucumbers, I highly recommend burpless cucumbers. I don't know why anybody would grow a classic slicer today. The burpless are earlier, they're more productive, they resist diseases better, they have thin skin, and they're free of bitterness. Just outstanding varieties available, and the top one in our trials is Summer Dance. It has very high ratings every year in our trials. If you like a pickler, homemade pickles wins our trials every year. Gardeners love its extended 
yield, um, good productivity, and has a nice crisp texture with small seeds. For lettuce, and everybody tonight should be getting a packet of butter crunched lettuce. For lettuce varieties, I look for something that can take the heat. Butter crunch has been around for a long time, and it's one of the easiest to grow lettuces. It's crisp texture and nice sweetness. It's a great lettuce. Another variety that everybody's getting a packet of tonight is flashy trout back. Flashy trout back has some heat tolerance to it, but I mainly just included it just for the fun of it so that I think it's a German heirloom that a lot of people say it's the most delicious lettuce. It's just kind of fun to grow because it's got those wine red blotches on it. It looks like the back of a trout dish. The highest rated lettuce in North Dakota in our trials is called Fusion. It has amazing heat tolerance. It has the crispness of romaine and the ruffled leaves of a leaf lettuce. This is the one that gets gardeners excited, Fusion. For melons, melons are always a risky thing for North Dakota because of our cool summers. But Athena is the standout variety for the Midwest. Aphrodite is a little bit earlier and has a bigger sized melon. And Goddess is the earliest. If you need an early ripening cantaloupe like up in the north, Goddess is the highest quality you can grow. If you want a green flesh melon, it's hard to grow honeydews reliably here. I encourage you to try a Galea melon and varieties Passport and Arava have done well in North Dakota. I like that you can just when they're, when they're ripe, they just fall off the vine. They slip off the vine. That's what That makes it so easy for us to know when to harvest. If you can't take failure as a gardener, I recommend you grow Korean melons. They are surefire. Anybody can grow a Korean melon. They're just like growing cucumbers. They're so plentiful. They grow about 8 to 10 inches long. And when you cut them inside, they have like a white pear flesh. Very easy to grow. The best watermelons, Sweet Dakota Rose, developed right here in North Dakota. A lot of gardeners tell us that's the best tasting watermelon they've ever grown. Sangria has done well in our trial. It's especially popular for its dark red flesh. Beautiful. And I thought Sangria was kind of a weird name for a watermelon, but I understand that it's used a lot for drinking watermelon juices. And then if you want to add a little bit of sangria in with it or some rum to add a little extra boost to it, then go for it. And if you want to grow the easiest watermelon, it's the ones with yellow flesh. They're earlier than the red ones in general. Yellow doll. And this is, again, something you can't buy at the grocery store, but we can easily grow it in our backyard garden, a gourmet watermelon. The best pea for shelling is Lincoln. Lincoln is productive, it's good for freezing, and it's easy to shell. If you don't want to shell peas, like I hate doing that. It was every 4th of July I had to shell peas. You can grow a snap pea, and Sugar Ann is the easiest, most productive, and reliable variety. You don't have to trellis it, and you eat the whole thing, shells and all, and you can spend the 4th of July watching fireworks. We do some potato testing. We look for varieties that can resist diseases. And like dark red Norlin is a good red potato early. Yukon Gold is good, but even Yukon Jam, which NDSU helped contribute to develop, is even a higher rated potato. Our highest rated potato is Purple Viking. Just look how beautiful that marbled purple skin is. And Purple Viking tolerates dry conditions. Um, it resists scab disease, and it looked at white flesh, just snow white flesh, just great for mashed potatoes. This is a winner, Purple Viking. Here's a couple of my kids showing off their neon pumpkin. And if you've got kids, this is the easiest to grow pumpkin you can grow because it doesn't turn green. It starts orange and just gets bigger and bigger until you get to be about a 10-pound pumpkin. The vines don't take over your garden. This is the easiest to grow pumpkin, and it's great for the north. It's ready two weeks before every other variety. But I have found if you really want to get the kids happy, 
get a big pumpkin, but one that's easy to grow. Um, some of these exhibition pumpkins, they have to, it's like having another kid. You got to water them all the time. You got to feed them all the time. You got to put a blanket on them so their skin doesn't get too dry. We want to keep that skin soft so we can keep growing. That's too much work. I like big moose and so do our gardeners. You just plant the seed and you come back at the end of the year before the hard frost and you'll have all these 40 to 50 pound bright orange pumpkins. Easy to grow. Big moose is a winner. Another, a new set of varieties that are available now are the early varieties and it's early giant, early king. Easy to grow and dark orange, beautiful pumpkins, about 30 pounds. These have been outstanding in our trials. The best spinach variety for the spring is Space. It's a smooth leaf, slightly crinkly variety. It can tolerate the heat. And so everybody's got a packet of that that we shared with you today. And lastly, let's finish with winter squash. This is a buttercup squash. And North Dakota can be proud that we provided buttercup squash to the world. And good varieties include Burgess, which has a full vine, and Bonbon, which has a bush type of vine. So there you go. There's some rapid fire recommendations of varieties. And maybe we can just take out a few questions. I want to thank all of the photographers, give them credit, and any quick questions. Tom, uh, can you comment on which tomatoes work best in high tunnels? Okay, this is what I would recommend for high tunnels. I would recommend you get that Johnny Selected Seed Catalog, and they have special varieties made for tunnels special tomatoes and cucumbers and another good seed company would be the harris seed company out of new york they have special varieties for tunnel production i'll just let it go with that where do we find these varieties for sale okay the, the back page of that vegetable guide right there those are seed sources for you and if you ask go for those seed companies you'll you'll get them there if you see any variety, you know, we've got the wonder of Google now, right? So like if I, let's say I wanted to get fusion lettuce. I love that one. All I have to do is type in fusion lettuce and Google will tell us the seed companies that offer it. A couple of recommendations for Socrates cucumber and Armenian cucumbers. Okay, I'm glad those people like it. <laughs> Armenian cucumbers are like a very smooth skin, light green types. Okay, share the wealth, share the knowledge. I haven't tested them though, but I'm sure they're good. Where do you find the neon pumpkin seeds? Neon pumpkin seed, Google will tell you where to get them. And actually there's there's several seed companies that will that will sell neon. What was the potato with the purple skin and golden flesh? Is that called Peter Wilcox? Yes, that's uh, exactly. Peter Wilcox has done good, has, has been a good performer in our trials. Purple skin with a golden flesh, that's exactly right. Uh, what type of sweet potatoes for Western North Dakota? Okay, what kind of sweet potato? The earliness is gonna be the key and also having low expectations for success because this is not Louisiana. Um, but Beauregard is the most commonly, um, that's the, a, a commonly grown variety for the North, Beauregard. And that's available if you go through seed catalogs or go to Google, you'll find sources of Beauregard slips. What's the best pumpkin for pie? Okay, the best pumpkin for pie is not a pumpkin. It will be a type of a squash. And, you know, Libby's, Libby's, Libby's pumpkin actually is a butternut squash and the highest the the variety they use is called dickinson and i can even share you some seeds of that if, if you want to contact me i can share you seeds of that it's uh it's it's more towards the ohio area so it needs a it's got a marginal as far as make ripening in time but i would grow a butternut squash or a buttercup squash one of those two not a pumpkin someone's looking for non-gmo seed for corn how do they find it how do they know Okay, non-GMOs, almost every variety, 99.9 .9 varieties of, in seed catalogs are non-GMO. You cannot grow a GMO variety unless you fill out a contract ahead of time. So that's really almost, you have to look for a GMO variety and otherwise just assume it's not GMO. We talked about where to find this stuff. Uh, what causes scab in potatoes? 
Okay, uh, scab is a, it's a pathogen, and I'll tell you how to prevent it. First of all, you look, when you buy your potato seed, you pick a variety that naturally resists scab. Okay, now the, the next, because some varieties like red Pontiacs are very susceptible, but dark red New Orleans are not susceptible. And then the easiest way to prevent scab in North Dakota is just to make sure you have some moisture in the soil when the tubers are forming, okay? And so whenever you see that your potato vines just starting to bloom, you got like about a six week period where you have to keep a little bit of moisture in the soil at all times, and that will help prevent scab from forming on your tubers. What about black streaks and black spots in potatoes? What's causing that? Okay. Um, uh, black streaks inside the potato. Hmm. Uh, the scurf comes to mind, but I think what you have to do is we have to we have to go over this. Um, you have to write me an email about it, and then I, uh, we can identify what's going on there. And we've got a potato specialist at NDSU, Andy Robinson. You know, he's he's the man. I would contact Andy Robinson. You can find him on, online and contact him directly too. Have you tried the Amish Roma tomato? Amish, the Amish Roma tomato, or the the, uh, the I know of a, a variety called Amish paste tomato, which is a paste or so-called Roma type. Um, I have not grown that, but it is an indeterminate vine, and I hear good things about it. Can you explain the best way to store seeds from season to season? Okay, the best way you got to keep it cool. So we harvest good quality seed that wasn't from diseased, infected plants, because otherwise we can transmit that disease to our next crop through the seeds. So you gotta make sure you got clean seeds, you know, clean plants. And then uh, the best way is keep them cool in like a, a glass jar in the refrigerator. That's the best way to do it. Two more. What catalog and plant source is best for organic? Okay. It's, okay. Lots of seed companies will offer organic varieties, um, you know, and uh, like, for example, Johnny's, almost every, almost every seed kettle will offer some organic varieties, and they will say that, that this is an organic variety. If you're looking for a seed company that only offers organic, the one I know is Seeds of Change from the Southwest. They are exclusively organic. But again, you can buy a, a lot of seeds, like you like, especially a lot of heirloom companies seem to go that route, like uh, like Baker Creek and uh, Seed Savers Exchange. You'll find lots of organic stuff there. Uh, can you cover one more time yeah. where to find seeds, and then when are we going to hear about variety trials for this year, and how do they sign up? Okay, so you want to know about where to find seeds? Okay. Okay, um, where to find seeds? Okay, well, you got us this from the trials. Oh, from you know, if you're interested in the trials, I'll tell you the last few years. If you go to our website, we have a section on results. In, in the results section, like let's say the 2017 trials, actually, for every variety we tested, I write where the seeds where you can order the seeds. The last, the last year's issue, I just said there was really no point to doing that because, my goodness, it's on the Internet now. Because, like, if you, did, you should name any break. Where can you find Neon neon Pumpkin? Well, you can find it Harris, Territorial, Johnny's. There's lots of places where you can find Neon. Just go online or, you know, Jung. I don't know if Johnny's has it, but a lot of companies have it. Just go Google Neon Pumpkin Seed. Bang. It's there for you. If you have a, if you're having problems finding a variety, please contact me. Because again, I live for seed catalogs, and I can tell you, tell you where to find it. Okay, everybody, there we go. We almost got out on time, and uh, thank you, everybody. Wow, I think we had a record-breaking crowd this time. We had well over 500 gardeners here, and off to a great success. And let's keep the momentum going. Tell your friends about it. Um, you're welcome to the county extensions offices that are participating. You're welcome to go online and participate. And next week, we're going to focus on fruits and soils. So I hope to see you next week. Thank you, everybody.